93, we had a blizzard. Y'all remember, we had a blizzard. And the snow drifted behind the, the dining hall at Faith Baptist Camp between eight and 10 feet deep. We couldn't even get out of the yard. Had a blizzard, friend, but Jimmy Ray Seaton, that's Jimbo Seaton's brother, he, he couldn't get back to Knoxville. His court Miss Amanda, Amanda Wheeler, we call her our adopted daughter, and he get, couldn't get back. He couldn't get back to Knoxville, so he preached at our home. We didn't have no power, nothing, but God had worked all of that out. How he, we had some lamps and some kerosene. It, we had a kerosene, kerosene sun heater. God had all, worked all of that out. He preached at our home on Sunday morning. Yeah. Brother Mike put that on Sunday evening, service right on. Service right on. Two or three Sundays now, in 58 or nine years, I just, that's all I missed. And that was one of the Sundays. Is everybody listening? God help us. Serious thing. Last leg, don't you think now, don't you ever get to meditate and think it. And you young people, don't you let this discourage you. We gotta occupy. We gotta occupy till he comes. And the preacher, first preacher, preaching, I noticed when I got in here, he's talking about the coming of the Lord. Is everybody listening? Then the last preacher preached on Bible separation. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness? We need to tell our boys and girls, we need to tell our young people, the best way to never marry a sinner, don't never court one. That's it. I don't care who he is. I don't care who she is. I don't care if she's Miss Georgia or Miss America or Miss Universe. It will never be right. Never, never, no, never. will never be right. Be you not unequally yoked together with the unbelievers. Now, my little mother-in-law, Sister Kate, you knew Jim's mom. She didn't know no better. She married my daddy-in-law, a father-in-law, when she was 13, 13 years old. And he was lost. He was lost. And she went into the Lord. It didn't take 48 years. That's all. Now that running around, now that drinking, him drinking, she couldn't keep that from the children. That though my father-in-law, my dad-in-law wasn't even saved, he never interfered with our marriage. Never did. Amen. Amen. He never did interfere with our marriage. And though he was lost. And I was in the family 14 years before he got saved. 14 years I was in the family. And Mr. Wilson got regenerated. And everybody look at me. Sitting right over here one Sunday. There sitting. I didn't say father-in-law, I like dad-in-law dad better, don't you? And I like daddy and I like mama better than I do, better than I do mother. I like mama and instead of father, God help us. I'm old-fashioned, I'm, I'm real old-fashioned, I'm going to stay old-fashioned. I got started right, Yes. There ain't no question about it, I got started right. Hearing them great preachers, I got started right, yes, sir. but it's more important how I'm going to finish my race. Yes, That's right. Yes, how I'm going to finish this thing up is more important. Yes, sir. And let me say, pastors, I don't claim to know a lot, but if you go to a church in the perfect will of God or start a work, it's springtime. Seems like everybody loves you. And then summer comes. Summer comes. Then fall comes. But go ahead and get ready. Winter! is on its way. Winter is on its way. And if you're not real careful, when winter time comes, you'll think the brook tried up and it's time for you to leave. Come on, son. Nothing. Oh, yes. When winter comes, you just need to dig in and lay with God and pray and stay with the stuff. Winter's coming, friend. Winter's coming. And it'll come. 
and you'll think the brook dried up. I've got a good friend, one of the best preachers. He was one of the best preachers still, one of the best preachers in America. And he started this work, and he called me one day. Brother Allen, I'm fixing to resign the church. Some of his own family was members of that church. He said, they're taking me for granted. And they really would. And he left that church, and he went, listen, he left that church and went to another church and to another church and come back and started another work, one of the great, and dissolved it and give the money to good churches. Is everybody listening? And he wound up in North Carolina, and he wound up leading singing for the preacher that was in that church with him. That's what happened. Now, you may get back in the perfect will of God, but you may not. Now, Jonah did, you said, and you saw Jonah if you want to, but if you miss it, there's a possibility you may never get back in it. Hey, man. You may never, friend. And I could have missed her, too. If I hadn't spent a lot of time along with the Lord in the fields, and in the woods, in the fields of a night, praying, I could have missed it. I was wanting to get out full time. And they called me to the best church in our county at that time, the best. And, I, and you better watch about these results. I never preached a time at this church that I, I don't believe I preached a time and don't tell, that somebody didn't get saved. Now, that could be a sign, but it may not be. And if I'd have took that church, they said, preach all the meetings you want to, just be here on Sunday. If I'd have took that church, I'd have missed the perfect will of God for my life. I see it. And then they called me to the best church in Whitfield County at that time. Not one of the best, the best one in the whole county. They wanted to call me. What God's will me to take that church. Howard Crow came to the South Calhoun Baptist Church and it grew so past her that they had to relocate, buy land and relocate. The church grew so. And this other church, I recommend Ray Bearden, he went to Olivia, stayed there about seven years and built that new auditorium, that educational building. Dalton Rescue Mission was born. They had 170 sub acres in Whitfield County. Now what's gonna shock you folk here this morning? They done all of that without me. <laughs> Could you believe that? They done all of it. And if I ever get to feeling important, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. If I ever get to feeling important, I'm gonna take a and I'm, I'm going to say this, you young men too, you young ladies. I courted one of the finest girls. She had never, she had never courted. She might have let my cousin take her to the prom. We went to school together. We courted three years. Was engaged 18 months. Engaged. And before she graduated from Grady, we both realized that it was not God's will for us to marry. And we broke that engagement. What an easy friend. I had a preaching appointment over, I believe, in Elegy. And I didn't want nobody to go with me that night. I wanted to be by myself. Be alone with the Lord. Oh, yes. And see what was happening, Sister Cape. God has let Jimmy grow up, graduate from school, and get old enough for me to marry. <laughs> what do you think about that? Hey, man. Now it's my calling to preach in the perfect will of God. Pastor of first churches in the perfect will of God. I've been at Concord now 53 years in the perfect will of God. I travel in evangelism in the perfect will of God. And I, I'm as content out there if I was sitting in, the, sitting in my living room, smooching my wife and playing with him. That's it. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Bob Jones Sr. was right, sir, when he said, get on the possum's trail of God's perfect will for your life. Yes. And don't let nothing or nobody yes. sidetrack you. Amen. Nothing, friend. Amen. Nothing or nobody. Amen. God help us. Now, if you can get saved, folk, and you can go ahead and record a little bit now. And I'll preach about 30 minutes if it's the Lord's will. You just stay here with me if you want to. We'll be fine. Second <laughs> Peter 3 8. Second Peter 3 8. Let all you preachers stand, missionaries 
evangelist, full-time Christian work. Y'all just stay. Look here. You have to learn this. If, I, if you had me to come to your church and preach a meeting, you know who's in charge? You. I submit to authority. I don't care if that preacher hadn't. Listen, I don't care if he's 30, 25 years old, 30 years old. I'm under him while I'm there. That's it. And if you don't submit to authority, you probably never will get in a place of authority. That's right, preacher. You may get in there, but God may not be in it. You're right, preacher. That's yes. it. Amen. Jesus is coming. Yes. And we need to get excited about it. Amen. Amen. Beloved, be not ignorant. Look at it concerning this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. From Adam to Christ, tell me how long it was. Four thousand years or four days. From the time Christ was born in Bethlehem, Judea, how long has it been? Tell me. Almost two more thousand. So what happened, preacher? What has happened? God made everything. God made everything in six days. Come on now. God made everything in six days and finished his work and rested on the seventh. So the 7,000 years could very easily be the millennial rank. That's a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Yes, now if we suffer with him now, we shall also reign with him. Yes, but if we deny him, he also will deny us. Yes, sir. Right. But if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, yes. for he cannot deny himself. Yes. According to that scripture, that looks like every saved person will be here, but how many of us is going to get to reign with him? I think I might ought to read that again. What do you think? It is a faithful saying. Yes. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Yes. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he also will deny us. But if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, for he cannot deny himself. What about being here, pastor, for the thousand years, not getting to reign with him? What do you think about that? I wonder if I halfway rightly divided that. God help us. Serious thing, friend. Jesus is coming. I'm going to let y'all be seated in about two or three more minutes. Now look at me. In John 13, he told them how one of them was going to deny. He told them how one of them was going to betray. And he told them how he was going away. Well, you think I ought to mention this, Titus 2.11? For the grace of God that brings salvation have appeared unto all men. I've never been able to use it like Brother Chuck. He had that big clock. And he said that Romans 1 and 20 will unlock any difficult verse in the Bible. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by those things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they're without excuse. How you like that, friend? Amen. 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 So if you can get saved, folk, looking for the blessed hope, if they're a thousand miles away from anybody, and nobody would ever find out what they're doing, they'll be living right. I said if there's a thousand miles away from anybody, they'll be living right. Every man that has this hope in him Himself, even he's pure. Yes, yes sir. I want to be the same. I won't have to ha- get nobody rushed to telephone. If you want to call my wife, now. Or if you want to call Samuel, or if you want to call David, yeah. or if you want to call Hannah. Yeah. I want to be the same at home. Yeah. I want to be the same at home as I am out in public. That's it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't want it to be like vicious pit bulldogs 
135-pound Walt Walters. <laughs> hey, man. How you like that, ma'am? I love it. And if I'm off in a meeting, I don't care if I'm 1,200 miles away from home. When she closes, it closes on Friday night, and there ain't nothing wrong with waiting until Saturday morning to leave either. But I'm usually always got somebody with me, and we'll be packed up, ready to check out Friday night and head home. Wonderful. Nothing like it, son. Don't you let that discourage you. You've got that great Bible there. And we've got to occupy until he comes. So just stay with the stuff. Hey. Honor God. Don't let this discourage you about Jesus coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Yes. But when the fullness of time was come, yes. God sent forth his son. Yes. Made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them which are yes. under the law, Amen. that we might receive the adoption yes. of sons. Yes. Now my soul is saved, and when I got saved, I received the spirit of adoption. Amen. Y'all follow me? Yes. I said I received the spirit of adoption. Yes. And guess what happened? What do you think happened? Predestination went to work in my life. Predestination never has anything to do with a lost person. When I got saved, predestination went to work. That predestination will see to it that that adoption's complete. When that adoption is complete, I'll be son placed and my body will be just as saved as my soul and spirit. And for the first time, we will have reached sinless perfection. Not until then. How you like that? Am I right? That adoption's not complete, sir. You receive the spirit of adoption. And predestination went to work in your life. And that predestination will see to it that that adoption is complete. Amen. When that adoption's complete, we'll be sun placed. Yes, sir. Amen. And my body will be just as saved as my soul and spirit. Yes, yes, right. And for the first time, we will have reached sinless perfection. Amen. In 1 John 1, 8, if we say that we have no sin, I say, folk, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word's not in us. But oh, do you like 1 John 2, 1? My little children, these things right unto you, that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That verse right there is pretty tough on the hyper calvinist that believes in limited atonement, that believes in irresistible grace. That's just a little bit tough on them. That's it. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me, and you will not come to me, and you will not come to me, and you will not come to me. So it looks like they could have come. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You will not come to me that you might have life. Right. You don't become a Hollywood evangelist. You don't become a hyper Calvinist studying the King James Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Right. Billy Canoy was one of the strongest grace preachers you could ever hear. And he said, I don't see how anybody could believe in limited talk. Right. And he preached awful hard up there in that camp on grace. That camp meeting, we went over to the cafeteria or to the lunchroom for lunch, and I sat beside him. And he said, you know, the Bible does say you do always resist the Holy Ghost. What do you think about that, sir? Did you know that's in the Bible? Did you know that verse is in the Bible? You do also, he said in Acts 7, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And you don't become a fadeless studying the Bible. You become a fadeless studying great books. Got a lot of meat in them. I mean a lot of meat. But if you're not strong enough to eat the meat and spit out the bones, Leave them alone. Amen. 
as thing do. Amen, Brother Allen. But don't go off and talk about me over a good meal today. Because I need help. You can come to me and help me out with that Bible. Now, when I get to John 6, 37, I try to preach it. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. John 6, 44, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. But when I get to John 1, 11, I'm going to preach that too. Yes. But he came unto his own, but his own received him not. Right. But to his many, no. I was going down this aisle a minute ago, and I'm going to go down this and over here now. But to his many received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed upon his name, which were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. And when I get there, I'm going to preach that too. Them, them uh, tracks run side by side, but if you ever get down there, and you look and you just see one set of tracks, you've messed up somewhere. Come on now. Help the old preacher out a little bit. I know you folk, most all of you know more than I do, but y'all help me out when I'm doing my best. Amen. Love that. Be not ignorant concerning this one thing, that one day is the Lord's a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. Be seated. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Verse 12, teaching us that to die ungodliness. You girls are having problems. You're having a hard time even going buying clothes fit to wear. I guess most of the clothes designers now are lesbians and sodomites. They don't fit like they did 40, 50 years ago. They're so tight, you better thank God they was made out of good, had sewed up with good thread, or they'd burst wide open. They're so tight. Amen. Amen, Brother Allen. Amen. Men that are normal, but we've got, Sister Kate, we've got so many men out here now, they're not normal. They've seen so much on that television and the internet and other places. They're not normal. We've got people out here now might have as many devils in them as that Gadarean did. He had between four and 6,000 in him. They're devil possessed, friend. Don't you kid yourself. God help us. And it's important, ladies, keep her right. Keep her right here and keep her right down here. Amen. And be sure there ain't no slits coming up about right along here. Right. Amen. 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 In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest, modest apparel. Amen. And one meaning of that word modest, it's decent, not calling attention to one's body. Right. Amen. And if you're dressed in such a manner that you cause men to look on your beautiful body and lust after you, you're as guilty as the man is. Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's getting a little quiet now. I don't blame you. I don't blame you for not saying amen. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch, you already know, I ain't telling you nothing. You know his is singer and branch is singer. And you know what you're talking about, don't you? Nation of Israel. His branch is yet tender. And since May of 1948, she's been putting forth the leaves and a lot of them. Nabank, his branch is yet tender and putting forth the leaves. So you know when summer's nigh, let me see. It's even near, even at the doors. That is doors. Amen. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Amen. Well, you read the last chapter of Job. What was the generation? 35 years, look at it. You say, what do you think the generation is now? I think it's 40 years. What do you think? I think it's 40 years. It ain't talking about that. This generation shall not pass. And see, they're talking about wild Hitler. You might have gassed six million of them, them Jews, but no doubt, you could have got to save Hitler, but no doubt you're in hell. 
absolutely. If you go, if you think, if some of them countries over there thinks they're going to annihilate all the Jews, what they need to do, sir, is eat them a big meal and go out in the woods and stick their finger down as far as they can and vomit everything they've ate up. You're not going to annihilate all them Jews. Come on now, you just well say, man. Amen. 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 Genesis 12, 3. That uh, war, was it Desert Storm? Desert Storm, there's more, there's more people killed by friendly fire than there was in the war. You knew that, didn't you? Oh, yes. And I had that major to call me. My wife seldom ever bothers me when I'm praying. But she came in the secret place while I was praying. She said, you better take this call. It was that major that trained most all of them men that fought in Desert Storm. And he said, Mr. Allen had a hard day yesterday. Had a rough day. He's either in Afghanistan then or Iraq. But he said, somebody gave me one of y'all's youth choir CDs. Huh. He said, I just want to call you and tell you he pulled me out. Hey, man. <laughs> and if it had been one of your youth choir or, or one of your choir CDs, I'd have said the same thing. Amen. Oh, yes, yes son. Yes, sir. I've Amen. said the same thing. Right. Amen. God help us. Yes, Train most of them men had fought in Desert Storm. And uh, we went over there. They're shooting them, what, stud missions? And on Israel, we went over there and protected them. America did. That's the two reasons why there's more, most, more people killed by friendly fire than there was in the war. And I'd say this. If it had been President Carter, or if it had been President Trump, when George W. Bush Sr., he flew 72 sorties in World War II and was shot and died. Come on now, check and see if I'm right. That's all I want you to do. He knew war, friend. When he come to the Pentagon, he asked him, how long has the war been started? I know he's asked him, has, has the war started yet? Him, the president, they said it's been going about an hour. You don't fight wars from the Pentagon. You let, them, you let them soldiers, you let them sergeants, and them lieutenants, and them colonels, you let them fight the war out there on the field. Right. Yeah. Amen! Come on now! Yeah. Somebody needs to stay with me. Yeah. You don't fight wars. And President, he said, as the war started yet, they said it's been going about an hour. He has to make American people to stop whatever they're doing and pray. Yeah. I was listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. I made that clear to him, the young lady, yeah. young man. I'd have said it if it was a Democrat. I'd have said it if it was an independent. Yeah. Is everybody listening? Yeah. Everybody listening. Yeah. And listen, you got to win wars. There ain't no substitute for victory. Right. No substitute. There's no substitute for compromise. Yeah. There's no substitute. I heard General MacArthur, Douglas MacArthur, he said, you gotta win wars. If other countries gonna have respect for your country, you gotta win wars. There's no substitute for compromise. There's no substitute in the Christian life for having victory. Is everybody listening? No substitute. God help us. You just have to lay with the Lord, lay with the Lord, pray, pray, read, read, read. There's no substitute. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Somebody ought to say man. Amen. No substitute. Well, his branches get tender and he's putting forth leaves. You know, this is summer's nigh. So likewise, when you just say, now the Jews, you know, the Christian Jews had a meeting a few years ago. This generation shall not pass. You know what they agreed on? They said it was talking about the generation of people that was living in May of 1948. Some of us will be living to hear the shout and the voice of the archangel yes. and the trump of God. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's Amen. what I believed. Right. And if you believe that other, what I mentioned a few minutes ago about not late all the Jews, it's got to be talking about one of them two things. And because you believe that in that one, and I believe this one, is talking about my generation. Don't get, 
upset at me. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But it's the days of Noah, and all the signs, ma'am, all the signs, I believe every one of them is pointing to the revelation instead of the rapture. And if they are, the rapture will take place seven years before the revelation. So how close are we? I'm not for sure who's going to blow the trumpet. Not positive. 